Hello everybody and welcome to my session. My name is Wu and I work for Brawl Stars as a VFX artist. In this session, I'm going to talk about VFX in Brawl Stars, reviewing some effects, explaining how I've come up with ideas, the production process, and pros and cons of making VFX with Flash. Brawl Stars uses Adobe Animate, formerly Flash, as its fundamental tool. Since Flash doesn't play a major part in game VFX, I've had difficulty finding knowledge and tips from others. So I want to share what I've learned so far with VFX artists out there who struggle with Flash. Okay, before we start, I've prepared a short video for some of you who haven't seen Brawl Stars VFX. Let's check it out. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video. As you saw, we have a very strong cartoonish style of effects, which is made with my blood, sweat, and tears. I assume that there are some people here who haven't heard of this game, so it would be nice to explain a bit about Brawl Stars. It's a multiplayer battle royale type of game, very fast paced. We have quite a few game modes with different rules, but we don't need to review game design stuff. So just moving on to the art style. It has a very casual, cute, chubby, and cartoony style. It's not a serious world type of battle, so we don't want to use the violent graphics. Even when a brawler gets killed, for example, that effect is more like a popping puff of smoke rather than fragmented body parts with blood. We want to make it look like a playful brawl. So, our VFX also has a very clean and cartoony style. Elements are generally chunky and thick rather than sharp and thick. And to keep the style, I try not to use transparent resources as much as possible. It doesn't fit our visual identity and doesn't help the readability either. Most of the resources are 2D, but there are some 3D projectors as well. But even if it's 2D, it should look like 3D because, of course, it's a 3D game. We have quite a few different environments, so the effect must be easy to recognize in a wide range of colors. And optimization is always the key to any great game art, but especially for a real-time PvP game like us, it's really important. I don't want to cause a situation like if 10 sticks of dynamite explode at the same time, it can kill the game. So it must be as light as possible. One of our main product is a custom skin and it requires a custom effect. Lastly, our VFX pipeline is strongly based on Flash. We don't support 3D meshes or custom shaders, but we have our own particle system. That's pretty much similar to particle systems in the other commercial game engines. Alright, it's time to complain. I love winzing. We use Flash and i will never used Flash for making real-time VFX before I joined the team. Of course, I know that it's a fairly competent tool to make hand-drawn sequential resources, but for games such as Brawl Stars, which requires unlimited content, it wouldn't be the best choice. Besides, it's a 3D game, so there were quite many obstacles to overcome. The first one is technical limitation. Our engine doesn't support 3D meshes, no spiral meshes, no ring meshes, no sphere, no anything custom but a quad. We don't have a custom shader with basic functions like you with scrolling, distortion, clipping, etc. We only have some color blending modes. And even the blending modes weren't great. For example, if I made a star with five triangle shapes and used an additive blending mode from the upper hierarchy, what I expected was this. I thought if I made something into a movie clip, then the clip would be merged and drawn as a single element. But the reality was like this. Its sprite is separated from each other Thus, you can see the overlapped area. 
The bad thing about cartoon style VFX is it can be really messy if you don't organize everything. When I make explosion smoke, for example, if I just scattered small pieces of particles randomly, it would be visual chaos. And imagine the plural effects appearing at the same time, it seriously harmed the readability of the gameplay. So I need to polish an effect in every frame, and it's such a drudgery. The color range of environments is very wide. There are two popular and widely used maps. One is deep dark, and the other is very bright. So I couldn't just use an element with an additive blending mode. If so, it would be fine in the dark map, but burned out in the bright map. That ruined the readability of the effect. There is also a winter-themed map in blue. I'll talk about the reason we use blue later, but anyway, we use it as a key color for the Allies VFX. So I shouldn't use the same color as in the winter map either. For the sake of improving gameplay, when our players see an effect, they should be able to recognize which side it belongs to immediately. So the key color of effect is always blue or red. Of course, it could have some other colors, but it must represent the team. It's such a huge limitation, and sometimes there were tricky situations. Dynamite explosion, for example. There was no problem using blue or red dynamite, but when it comes to an explosion cloud, blue cloud give the wrong impression. It could be seen like something magical, but it isn't aligned with the character. He mustn't seem like a magician. So I had to find a way to make the explosion caused by an ally look harmless, even though it has reddish cloud. Custom skin is a really important product for our game and it's never-ending content. We have to be prepared for an unlimited amount of skin. But due to our way of making bear fast, we can't make a completely new asset every time. Maybe with a pack of VFX artists it would be possible, but I'm the only person taking care of assets, so every asset must be easily varied. After some investigations and experiments, my first conclusion back then was, okay, let's get out of here. There is no hope. I'm done. Seriously, I had no idea what I should do. I didn't even know about Flash at all. I couldn't imagine at that time there would be a company who makes real-time VFX with Flash in the 21st century. But before I quit, I wanted to try a few times at least. It would have been really hectic if I had gone back to my home country just a few weeks after I had landed in Finland. So, my first trial was a custom skin for Bali. This is a wizard skin for Bali. Bali is a thrower and he throws a fireball instead of a bottle. After the projectile hits the ground, it leaves an aerial effect. And the effect must be very clear because it gives dot damage. I thought it was a nice opportunity to define the shape language of the fire element in Brawl. The idea itself was straightforward. Fireball, explosion, and residual fire. But there were some limitations from the tech side. We don't have a trail system, so I couldn't use a directional resource for its trail. And this is basically a 2D element in the 3D world. So the projectile couldn't be aligned with its arc. If I divide it into a body part and a tail part, the body should be direction neutral and the tail should show a trajectory of the projectile. After some experiments, I made the projectile like this. This clip is for the body and emit these particles by our particle system. This was the first trial, so I wasn't sure about the result, but I found some possible solutions. For the explosion, it was quite simple. Before I joined the team, there was no one in charge of VFX. So it didn't look ideal, but it was very basic. And the schedule was pretty tight back then, so I decided to polish it later and mostly use the legacy effects at that time. Next is the residual fire. I made sequential sprites for the looping fire and made three variations by differentiating a start frame. I could have generated it by the particle system, but I was concerned about misinformation if it was too random. Something like this. 
Players could misunderstand the range of effect with these images, so I placed it and randomized scale and lifetime manually. After I finished this, I realized a few things. It might sound funny if you're a Flash expert, but it was my first time using Flash, and I was the only VFX guy in the company and still am, so I had to investigate step by step. Number one. If I put a clip with a short duration into a longer one, then the short clip will loop within the duration of the parent clip. Number two, you can use multiple color effects if features aren't overlapped with each other. For example, if you use the alpha effect for a child clip and use a tint effect for a parent clip, or vice versa, both effects do work. Number three, Flash has an advanced color effect which is called advanced. With this, you can completely change the color of asset. It's really cool. This is the only thing I like about Flash. Number four, anchor point is super annoying. If I modify the anchor point, it consistently moves back to the original place. It drives me crazy. Number five, graph editor is awful. I don't understand why every point gets affected when I modify one single point. If anyone knows the solution, please, I'm begging you, please let me know. Even though there were quite a lot of annoying incidents, yeah, it's not that bad, and the biggest outcome was confidence. Let's move on to the next example. The next example is the explosion cloud. Dynamite is a thrower type of character as well. He throws two sticks of dynamite at once, and they give splash damage. The dynamite is very simple. It's just a stick with a wick. For the sake of optimization, I made it with some simple geometric shapes. There is nothing special about the projectile, but the most important part was smoke. If I used sequences, it could look repetitive, there would be less possibility of variation, and the asset would have to be huge. I didn't want to use a massive amount of resources because if I started to rely on hand-drawn sequences, it would be problematic if we had hundreds of custom skin with custom effects. So I set some rules. Firstly, resources. It must consist of small geometric shapes. Secondly, colors. It should be easy to change color. Lastly, shapes. There should be many possible combinations. For the first one, I needed to define fundamental shapes to draw smoke. And I found out that I can make pretty much every shape of smoke with these figures. I'm gonna show you some examples. This is the very beginning of the explosion. You can see triangles, crescents, and circles there. These are the shapes of smoke when it's expanding. You can make all of them with just three geometric shapes. Next thing is color. Even the Brawl Stars art style is very cartoony, I need to give a little bit of volume because it's a 3D game. So I decided to put one more layer on top of the base, and separate them into different clips. Then you can animate the color of each, so the standard fire explosion looked like this. You can see the volume of the effect here, and you can depict different materials by changing its color. It could be poisonous, electric, or even mythical gas. But as you can see, if I use one type of smoke, it evolves players very quickly. So I made two different types of smoke, the standard looking one and dispersed one, and made three more types by mixing them. Basically, I made five different clouds with four shapes. It's a really light and optimized approach. But, this is not the end. Dynamite needed a bigger explosion for the special attack. I wanted to make a mushroom cloud for it. So I analyzed the real one first and reached this conclusion. It needs a bubbling cloud on top, a soaring pillar-shaped cloud in the middle with cloud rings around it. I made the top part with circling circles, the middle with circles, and the cloud rings with animated circles. So there are quite a lot of circles and it looks like this. Other than that, everything was fairly simple. Just a short flash 
and some fragments from the particle system. Okay, the next effects are on the ground. Both Sprout and Jackie have different attack mechanisms, but FFX-wise, it's almost the same as Dynamax. Firstly, let's take a look at Sprout. Sprout is a sort of golden robot. The concept of its normal attack is shooting a botanic ball, which gives splash damage. There is no magic about the projectile. It consists of several different sprites and moves like a pumping heart. This is just an ordinary animation. Next is the explosion. I made a ring with plants and animated them randomly. But of course, it's not totally random. Because that would be too chaotic to see the energy flow. I set the main movement and tweak some of them slightly. Then it doesn't look artificial but still gives the right impression to players. And you can see the green cloud when it's exploding. It's the same one from Dynamax but green. I think that's enough about Sprout. This is Jackie. She causes splash damage by drilling in the ground. The trickiest thing about her attack is the crack. If we had a simple digital shader, it would have been easy peasy, but we don't have such high technology. So I had to animate every bit of each crack. It's already traumatic to watch it again, but it's not the worst part. Here we go. I would have not dared to animate every single sprite. I needed a plan to cut the cost and the key was finding a regularity and patternizing it. So I divided the crack animation into three parts. Appear, remain, and disappear. I animated everything in the same timeline and differentiated their start time after. If I wanted to adjust the duration, I could do it by adding or deleting frames in the middle. I made a crack animation with shorter duration and placed it above the original. Then I could depict the team color through the crack animation above. For the special attack, I needed a different approach. Because this attack sucks nearby enemies into the center. And the weapon is drill, so I thought the movement should be a spiral. I made lines of spiral in the same way as I did for the normal attack and duplicated it. The result from that is this. It was really painful, but worth it. Let's have a quick look at some other interesting stuff. This is a water trail for Brock's summer skin. He shoots a shark missile, so the trail is water. As I said earlier, our engine doesn't support 3D meshes, so I needed to find an efficient way to make a wave. I made two sprites for it and animated them like this. Then it looks like a wave, right? After that, I covered the start and the end part with splashing water which was made with circles. We've talked about fire, water, and air, well actually smoke, which do you think is the next fundamental material? Electricity. I made several fragments and created some pieces of electricity. They are very useful. It was originally created for Jesse but I've used it in many places. Max, Horace Bow, Pam, etc. This is Shelly's Halloween scheme. Frankly, there is nothing special about the effect but I just put it in because I love cats. And I didn't expect it but this was one of the most beloved effects from the community. I know, a cat is always the best solution. When you are unsure about a fact, just put a cat in. Everything will be fine. The next is a UI effect. You can make this kind of effect in the same way. This shows when you purchase the Brawl Pass and uses the same resources with previous effect. And recently, we are making some facial animation as well. The faces are all animated with flash and projected on the surface of the models. It requires quite a lot of custom assets because each brawler has its own facial features. But I'm trying to streamline it by finding similarities between them. For example, a pupil, smile, eyebrows, etc. Alright, it's time to wrap everything up. I've picked pros and cons of using Flash to make real-time VFX. 
Let's talk about the pros first. Pros number one: style. What if we use a dominant way of making VFX? I mean, mixing multiple textures and using custom shaders to dissolve, distort, scroll, that sort of stuff. Of course, there would be some benefits, but it wouldn't be easy to make this sharp, clean, cartoony style. Something that looks like it's straight out of a comic book. Pros number two. Convenience. Most other game engines have a quite artist-friendly interface these days, but Flash has a better one. It's more like a graphics software, so I feel comfortable when I manage the resources, set hierarchy, etc. Pros number three: optimization. The question I've got mostly when I show the breakdown of Brawl Stars by Flash is about a draw call. I think it's more about our engine rather than Flash software. Anyway, we draw VFX elements with the same blending mode at once. I assume that works somehow similar to the dynamic batching in Unity. If you put something with a different blending mode in between, it increases the draw call, but otherwise, it's fine. Okay, let's move on to the cons. Number one, manpower. The first one is the effort cost. It usually takes a lot of times to make one asset, and most of the process is boring and repetitive. So I have to plan carefully to cut the cost; otherwise, it will drain my soul. Number two, 3D meshes. When I made 3D VFX with other engines or software, it was quite easy to produce something cool with custom meshes. But since Flash is strongly based on 2D, I can't take advantage of that. I wish I can just flow texture on meshes, but with Flash, I have to animate every piece by hand. Number three, limitation of expression. It's not only about Flash, but also our art style. It's hard to make something transparent. For example, such as aura, lingering light, smoke, etc. So when the effect covers a large area, it's hard to keep a sharp style. See this example. If I made an opaque effect in this scale, it would be super distracting. And like I said, due to the technical limitation of Flash, we can't make assets which requires a custom shader, something like glitch, noise, and so on. So, based on these pros and cons, I would recommend using Flash if your project is a 2D or a very stylized 3D game. I can't say it's an easy way, but I'm sure that you can create something unique. You may wonder, is it worthwhile using such minor software? But trust me, I totally feel you. There is a small difference, but the basics would be the same in any other software. For example, a spine, artifact, live 2D, or even some 3D software with a custom plugin. So I believe that you don't need to worry too much. The key things to remember to make good VFX are analyzing strengths, logic, planning, animating sense, color, these sort of things. They are really useful under any circumstances. Okay, this is the end of the video. I hope my presentation inspires you. Enjoy your art. Bye.